Why, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Anime Club. Yes, we are here. We have things to discuss. We are here to suffer. Yes, suffer. Suffering. Emo suffer emotional damage. Emotion. No, just do it. Emotional okay. damage. There we go. Yeah. My voice broke. God uh. damn it. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, all right. So this is this is Bunny Girl Senpai. Um, this is char characters, story, and all that sort of all, fun all, shit. Yeah, all that all that fun stuff. So, so the show is told in arcs. Yes, yes. which are each about individual characters. Yes, with, yeah. with the um, the main character running through all of them being S Sakuta. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Asu Asusagawa. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. I think it's Sakuta Asusagawa. Yes. Yeah. So he's our kind of titular character who follows all these little rascal, yeah, mm. little little arcs basically. Yeah, he's rascal, and then our first our first girl character in the first arc is Bunny Girl Senpai. Yeah, um, she wears a bunny or, costume for like fifteen seconds collectively. And then in the they keep, show. and then they yeah. keep referencing it. But yeah. her name's yeah. um, Sa Sakura Sakurajima. Yeah, Sakurajima yeah. Mai. Yeah, Mai Sakurajima. Yeah. Um, and she is suffering from adult in. Adolescent, sy not adult, adolescent Adolescent syndrome Which makes her invisible to everyone Yeah Yeah um, Yeah, don't nice power now that you think about it, huh? Yeah, so, so that's why our, our main character Kind of finds her walking around In, in, a, in a bunny girl outfit uh, But no one else can no seemingly one... see her But yeah. some, somehow our, our main protagonist can So, you know yeah. To her trying to order a cream bun Made my heart break it's just, by the end of that first arc it's just like oh my god give her like, a break cream abundus cream abundus yeah and uh, then yeah. just being ignored Ow. yeah uh mark this world off the worlds i do not want to get yeah. reincarnated or east kite or no. transferred into no. Yeah. no i have so many look adolescent syndrome seems to it seems to manifest into whatever bothers you the most or your worst anxiety. And honestly, I do not need the combination of anxiety, depression, and, like, the host of other mental issues I have manifesting into Look, a physical condition. That first arc really spoke to me because I've, <sighs> like, right down to the Schrodinger's cat analogy they used for her, that, and like, that entire anxiety of being forgotten about and not, and if you're forgotten about basically not existing, oh my god, like, that's something I've actually had before. This is genuinely the drive that makes, like, me answer text messages every time someone sends them, no matter what situation I'm in, like, desperately. Because I feel like if I don't answer people's text messages, they're gonna stop being friends with me because I didn't talk back to them. Which is why I always answer and I always have my phone on me and I get panic attacks when my phone's away from me. <laughs> Crippling anxiety. <laughs> yeah, no, this, this arc really spoke to mine and apparently Seki's anxieties as well. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this fucking show. <laughs> I mean, honestly, this, I mean, personally, this this didn't really speak to me as much, but it it's definitely like an anxiety that I can understand where, where it's coming from. It's, it, it's coming from a place of... Um, just the human condition, basically. Yeah. 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 Fucking hell. Nothing like a little existential dread to start off your morning. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. Nothing like a little good old fashioned depressive episode to start your day. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, okay. And and so the, the basic gist of like how uh, Sakuta manages to break this is he basically openly confesses his love to Mai like out in like the pub in like this public view or whatever. He has to, like, draw yeah. attention back yeah. to her in a way that isn't just, hey, hey, do you know who my Sakurajima is? Yeah. Which is well, what he tries to do at first. He tries yeah, to, like, he take her around places. Everyone kind of exists in how they are, and b by other people. So yeah. the idea is that if they know him and he declares that she exists, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everyone's forced to believe it. Yeah. Yep. So that that's how this, that's how this ends up working out, and... And then our uh, our yeah. scientific theory for this arc is Schrodinger's cat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. How about Schrodinger's fly slaughter, Vorn? 
Is you it can't broken? Go and check. Or is it uh, is it still intact down the side of the crack? It I exists think we can... sim- it exists simultaneously in a broken and unbroken state because we cannot confirm whether or not it is. And but we can confirm one thing in this scenario. Knickknack is still the fly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, so so the the arc one ends with him literally screaming out that he loves her to the entire school, which, by the way, is its own separate form of anxiety for me. Yeah. Like, the the idea of, of doing something like that in front of the entire school is... Ah! I also have humiliation anxiety, though, yeah. so... Yeah. <laughs> so, so literally, this whole show just... Every single thing that you do something makes you cringe because of your crippling anxiety regarding these situations. Yeah, we're going to go over in depth about how each of these arcs affects my anxiety. (laughs) So let's move on to arc two. Well, so, so, but okay, I want it. I'll just touch on this briefly and then we can move on. The, the one thing that I do like about this show is that it makes Mai and Sakuta a definitive pairing, like, in the sense yep. that it doesn't it doesn't dilly-dally around with, like, the bullshit that other, like, romance genre anime would dilly-dally around it with. It doesn't pull a domestic Nakana show. Yeah. Thank gosh. Yeah. It doesn't pull that kind of crap. Yeah, so, so Sakuta and Mai are endgame. Yes. We they, know that. Yes, they, they are they are endgame, and they are together, and that is honestly refreshing out of, like, an actual rom-com-ish anime. I wouldn't say... This leans more into the uh, the psychological kind of drama aspect of it, uh, but it is a nice touch regardless. That said, Mai kind of disappears from the show after this. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately. She kind of she kind of does, even though she's yeah. there, she kind of does become kind of a background character because she's just doing her modeling gig. Well, she's back to working and she yeah. works yeah. a lot. Exactly. She does play into a couple of the arts. Yeah, like she, like I, she actually, does... I actually don't mind that she bows out at this point because she's yeah. gotten her life back, yeah. which means she's working. And yeah. it's actually logical that she'd be shown less at this point yeah. because she doesn't have time to spend oh, no, all this time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and it's not like she bows out like completely. Like she's still there as like kind of as kind of like a a character, but she's more put into the role of side character, but still present. I'll say I never got the sense of the show that it fell into the trap that a lot of harem anime, especially, tend to fall into, where after the character's arc, they cease to be a three dimensional character and start just being a two D cut out of themselves. Yeah. yeah, that's the that's the one good thing is that they still is that they still kind of maintain a lot of their general personality rather than like you said reverting reverting to like a dumbed down form. Of their actual character nuance. Yeah. So, um, our second, second arc. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is covering uh, what's her face? T- Tomoe. Uh. Um, no. Was it Tomoe? Was it Tomoe or is it Futaba? Uh, no, not Futaba. So Futaba's it's Tomoe. the next one. Okay. okay. So it's covering Tomoe, which is oh, we we are introduced to Tomoe at the end of Sakura Sakurajima's arc. Yeah. yeah, they kick each other's asses. Yeah, quite yeah. literally, they kick each other in the ass and then have to go to the police station and explain why they are doing that in a public location. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That yeah. Is yeah. public <laughs> indecency. Um, <laughs> public indecency, boys and girls. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> no touching of the asses in public. Yeah. Um. So t- fucking Tomoe. Yeah. So she she is Sakuta's kohai, and the basic gist of this one. Let me see here. That was like, Laplace's demon. This is Laplace's demon. Yeah, yeah. Laplace's um, demon. And Laplace's demon is the one where she. Um, she quite it? literally gets to try every single yeah. option she possibly can, then yeah. actually do it in real life. Yeah. yeah. La- so Laplace's demon is like an 18th century scientific concept uh, that basically says. Um, every, you are in a moment in time where you possess the knowledge and understanding of, uh, every path for every atom in the entire universe to take. Um, and you can see every single one of the infinite combinations of movement that will be induced when you make a move and therefore thereby you can see exactly what's going to happen because you understand the atomic location of every single fucking atom in the entire universe. Yeah. Yep. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, one of the concepts I was familiar with, besides Schrodinger's cat, before I watched the show, although I did look it up again after just to double check. Yeah. 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 So, so the basic gist of this is she 
the, like basically the days start repeating themselves over. She's in she's in like a Groundhog Day. Yeah, it's like yeah. basically Groundhog like a, it's al- yeah, it's almost like that a Groundhog is, Day uh, situation uh, where time won't move forward. Yeah. yeah, she's in a time loop where she's just repeating the same day until she hits the right combination to get out of it. Yeah. Uh, but she doesn't know what the right combination is, so she's stuck repeating it. And honestly, this is a whole other form of anxiety for me. Same. Like that that whole, like, uh, did I make the right choice? Like, what if yeah. I had made this other choice uh, like 10 yes. years ago? The oh regrets. my god. There is genuinely, mm. like, it, not a day goes by in my head when I do not lay in bed at night and just think, what if I hadn't quit skating? What if I hadn't quit doing martial arts? What if I hadn't fucked up in high school? What if I'd actually gotten into a college that wasn't a community college? What if I was already graduated with my degree? What would my life be like if I was actually working? See, this is the... Ah! See this is see this is the part where I then remind myself there's no sense in wondering what 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 was. That I'm glad uh, you have emotional stability, realm. <laughs> Why? Why do you? Ha- I want I'm, your emotional stability. I, I'm, ju- I'm just I, I'm just lend li- it to me. I'm just I'm just like I, I'm just like I under I understand. I've been there, but <sighs> there's no sense in wondering what could have been. There like, is only what is now. See, the problem is my brain has not yet come to that conclusion. I know that that conclusion is logical, but my brain has not yet accepted it. I love the idea of... I love how it manifested here as being so caught up in what could be or what could have been to the point where you, you're, ba- you're living in the past because you're, you're so stuck on that. Yeah. 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 It's, it's yeah, it's it's so exactly the, the fuck on. Yeah, exactly. Also, I've recently I've I've been watching a lot of TV shows recently, like um, rewatching stuff, and I've seen at least like four different time loop episodes, probably okay, in the last time loops month are and just a half. A common story trope. Yeah, yeah. it's I like it. Yeah, like and they've been in like sci-fi and and um, like magic shows and shit like that, so it's been interesting. But also, I think this arc begins the duology of arcs that I call the down bad girls arc. Yeah, she's very, very <laughs> selfish. Yeah. I don't love Tomoe. She's kind of... She, she's the co- she's the token Kohai of character. All the main, of all the characters they show, she's the one that's present throughout the least of the show, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So this arc can feel a little bit like Thor. I like the arc, but it probably plays into the least overall. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, once again, the, the thing is... The show sets up all of the female characters, right, with with lives of their own outside of their interactions with Sakurajima. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so it's not required that they keep interacting with them yeah. past their issues being solved. Like, she's not even in the same grade as him. No. So yeah. obviously they're not going to yeah. share classes. They're not going to yeah. be doing a ton yeah. of stuff together. So it makes sense in the way that she doesn't show up again very often. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Also, she wants to be part of the popular clique to uh, not be ignored. Doesn't everybody? No, no, not particularly. I mean, I never wanted to be ignored in high school. I didn't want to be ignored, but I didn't give a shit about being part of the popular crowd. You know? I how, su- okay, yeah. I suppose it's not the popularity specifically, but yeah. like just having a group of people. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, no, fine. Fine. that's fine. That's that's yeah. fine. I mean, I had freaking crippling uh, loneliness since all the way through uh, middle school, so I don't really care. Well, I'm glad that I assimilated you into the group then. It was very useful to be able to cheat off your chemistry tests. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, after school, I was Outing yourself out. like that. that. That is genuinely how we became friends. Yeah. I could read his handwriting upside down and backwards. Warren and I became friends like... Just getting really, really angry about how awful our biology class was. Not the teacher, not the class stuff, just the class. The yeah. To it. be fair, we did have that really good discussion that one time about who the best Iron Man suit was, and I still maintain oh, yes. it's Veronica. Yeah. I don't remember which one it was anymore. I'm too tired. Um, so on to, on to Lucky Bachelorette number three. And this is Futaba. Futaba. This, this is the one that I see. Science girl, uh, right? Yes. yes. This is science girl. Yeah. Okay. The girl who cloned herself. Yeah. Yeah. Qua- okay. Quantum okay, teleportation. Okay. But, but, I feel it. <laughs> no, I definitely feel this one too. Yeah, this, this one is also one another deep-seated yeah. issue in my own brain, right? Is that like this duality. Look, I, this manifests for me not in having like, obviously, I'm not duplicated, right? But like, yeah. I have that sense where like, I have 
you know, like two entirely separate sets of clothing I buy. One that I don't wear out because I'm embarrassed to wear it out, and one that I'm okay wearing out because it's, like, socially acceptable. Mm-hmm. And even though the clothes that I'm embarrassed to wear out are socially acceptable, I have so much anxiety that they're not! Mm-hmm. Because, because of all the pressure that's mounting on you yeah. inside your brain. Exactly. So I get it. I get it. F- uh, I get it, Futaba. I do. Mm. I promise. I also would be very... I also would not be the person to take selfies of myself in a subway station. What's that subway station? Train, whatever. Yeah. Oh, okay. Something. Something. Yeah, she was she was out somewhere and taking selfies of posts. Yeah. You know, this arc's a little bit shorter than the other. Yeah, this one yeah. this one yeah. only lasts like two episodes in comparison. Well, and it's interesting because um, back in arc one, Futaba was like, um, I don't adolescence believe in adolescence. Is, yeah, it does not exist. Yeah. And then whoopsies, slap. There's right in the two face. of you. Yeah. <laughs> um. So this is what was it? Quantum. Yeah, quantum teleportation. Quantum, quantum, quantum teleportation. teleportation, and I, I did have to look that one up. Um, up obviously, it's it's not actually. Okay, yeah. no, none of these are going to be accurate. No, this it's, is this is a little, but it's, not. It's, no, it's, 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 like, the, yeah. the, I mean, the the authors using these terms very liberally. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure they're not actually supposed to be very scientific either. It's just how they're trying to explain it to themselves. I know. I'm. Yeah. I'm just. I. I looked it up because I was interested. It, it is probably the closest thing you will find to the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. obviously. The situation's a little funky. Yeah. I will say this arc's a little weird in that... It, it, Pacing-wise, as far as the series goes, I think this arc's a little bit weird because immediately following Tomoe's, the resolution to the arc both being a friend-zoning, really, it's kind of... I mean, salute to our fallen comrades here. But also, damn. Why yeah. you gotta do her like that? Yeah. 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 I, I do like th- I do like though that the this is my favorite resolution out of out of all of the uh, adolescent syndromes mm-hmm. because the resolution is that she has to accept both sides of herself yeah. physically yeah. and mentally yeah and in order for in order for her to conform back into one person basically yeah, yeah. so th- this for me was my favorite of the resolutions yeah I can see that I, I really like this one as well yeah like yeah. this one this one I liked. Yeah. So, and then after this one, we get into... Uh, Kaede, uh, right? Yeah, Kaede. Kaede. Yeah, no, Kaede. no, 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 we have uh, Sakurajima's sister. Oh, oh yeah, Sakurajima's Sakurajima sister. sister. Oh, yeah. Younger yeah. half-sister. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, her younger half-sister, um, who is a pop star, and they switch bodies yeah. because they have inferiority complexes towards one another, but they still love each other. But they they kind of feel like they're being pitted against one another by their parents, yeah, um, mm-hmm. and the younger sister is is jealous of the older sister, and the older sister loves the younger sister, but she like yeah you know so so they so um, they so they have basically a um, fuck what was that like there's this old movie like what? Freaky Friday yeah it was like a Freaky Friday moment um, once again I feel it. Well, that's probably my least favorite of the arcs. I, it's is it, is I it, understand it. I just, I don't feel the same way you feel. I mean, I don't necessarily feel it so strongly, but there is a tendency in my family, at least um, for like, so I can't obviously compare myself to my siblings because they're much older than me, but like there has been a tendency in my family for like people to make offhanded comments about like my my cousins or my nieces and nephews and how they're all like graduating college and often like math and science degrees you know and i'm still at community college doing a fucking social sciences anthro degree that i'm not done with and i'm still living at home and so i have like a healthy this is it's basically imposter syndrome in a way yeah, yeah. um and i i have a healthy dose of this i mean like a lot of the time mm-hmm. segment i get the freaking same responses from my parents the only thing is I just stopped giving a shit about it because I realized I'm going to do something different from them. Actually, um, we have a... I, the, one of the high school teachers I carpooled with is so guilty of this. Mm-hmm. Um, like, he will just he will just be, like, in the car carpooling with, like, mom and me, and he would be, like, talking about all the great things his kids are doing and how, how much they're making and all this kind of shit. And, it, and then he'd just be like, so what about you? Like, to me in the backseat. 
And that was like at least a weekly occurrence, if not more often. Mm-hmm. And we all know this teacher. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's not done out of, like, malice, but, like, my brain just immediately goes, wow, I am a fucking failure. I had the hugest inferiority complex when Nick Knack graduated college. I don't feel bad about that! Oh my god, you look like I kicked your dog! Don't feel bad! This is my own brain! <laughs> This whole this whole episode this crying. whole episode is just emotional damage. <laughs> mm. Emotional. I am damage. over it. My therapist worked through it with me. We're good. <laughs> just wondering, Realm, do you have a therapist as well? No, I don't. <laughs> I think I might be the only one My... in the group who has a therapist. No, I absolutely need one, but I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a complete psychopath, so there's no hope. I I I, wow. That sucks. That was a clap befitting of the statement just made. Oh, my God. <laughs> Take two. There we go. I, I I don't, but the thing is, is that at least in in relativity, at least as far as this topic is concerned, to my family and everything like that, I'm actually on the fast track to be one of the more successful ones in my family. My dude. Out of the four of us, you're one of the more successful people in this room. Yeah, you actually have like the most farthest gone in life. We like, don't know- you are you are the furthest forward in your job currently and happy with your situation. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Like I mean Knickknack's catching up, but you know. He yeah. had a four year time delay. Yeah. I mean, I was so happy until COVID goddamn it. <laughs> We're not going to talk about COVID and its, and its effect on our mental health. Yeah. Um, mm. Because that's not a topic we want to get into. But, um, so her, her resolution, their resolution, right, is that um, Sakura Jima shows her the, the letters that, that um, Mai was writing to her younger sister. And the younger sister realizes that her older sister loved her and, like, they both love each other. And uh, both their lives are hard. It's And it's not that their parents love one over the other. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just that, you know, they have hard jobs and they love each other, but they don't communicate very well. Yeah. It was a really weird effect when May went back to the right bodies. It was just like a little, like, it was like, and I don't hate this. I'm not saying this is just really funny and it stood out to me. Just the random, yeah. where they both just switched places again. Yeah. Also, I would let, I put forward right now a retraction of my meh. The discussion over this episode is good enough, and I'm feeling positive enough that I now give this show an approved. Oh, <laughs> that is that is all right. That is all right. This show is this show for me is somehow worse when you're watching it on your own, but in the context of having other people around, this is great. Well, being I love fair this. to yourself, it's a lot of <laughs> emotional blows, and you did watch it all at once. I did, so I did binge this. Yeah. Um, recently, so it's not. It's sitting very fresh in my mind. Okay, so now we're on to Kaede, the younger yeah. sister. Yeah. Oh, boy. Who, I don't, like, okay. The opening scene in episode one was a little sus, oh, right? Oh, okay, okay. Well, hold on one second. Okay, before we get into Kaede, um, there is a semi-recurring character that does that is actually related yeah. to Sakuta, the main character. Yeah. I can't, re- I can't Shoko. remember... Yeah, Shoko. Shoko. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And there are two kind of variants of her that appear throughout the show. There's one that appears to be like an older version of her. About college and, age. Yeah, about college age. And then there's the one that appears to be like almost like elementary school. Uh, middle or, school. Or middle, school. middle school age. Yeah. So she's kind of a recurring character for Sakuta. I forget, honestly, like what kind of like the significance is for her, but I just know that she's um, kind of... She helps him when, because we're, since yeah. we're going to the Kaede, yeah, yeah, anyways, we're going into the she Kaide helped era. him when Kaede, uh, like, had the life-changing event, and she needed, and he was completely emotionally unstable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially after also, like, the three slashes. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Right. So, Kaede. Let's, yeah, Kaede. I actually thought Kaede, at the start of the show, was my least favorite character. I thought she was really annoying. She had a sus... Uh, first scene because yeah uh, oh, look i i don't want to be like oh domestic nakanajo made me predisposed but, against certain types of shows but it did <laughs> but, i don't know i'm predisposed against certain types of shows to begin with so. yeah but like and it, you know we're she has a, like this sus start yeah. where she's like sleeping in bed with her older brother and she's just like i, I want to be pressed up against older brother's and, heat. Uh, um, I mean, eventually when we find out the reasons, it's understandable. It's understandable, yeah, it, it's, but they take so long to explain. Yeah, so throughout most of the yeah. show, she's just like this really annoying character. Yeah. yeah. And then the last arc hits, and uh, I'm just... 
on the floor crying. Yeah. <laughs> just think, like, like, holy fucking shit. Yeah. yeah. You do not need to go this hard, fam. Yeah. It, yeah. It, like, emotional damage. damage. No, that is yeah. the show in a nutshell. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think that's actually on purpose. Mm-hmm. I think it was, it was the, what got me was the suddenness of it all after they, like, because she's like going through this character arc of going outside and you get the idea that's what the arc is going to be about is, her overcoming this. Yeah. And, and then, then she might as well have just died. Yeah. Yeah. Because her whole, like, personality that you've known for her, like, up up to this point, is, is basically just gone. And that's the point. She's kind of been preparing for that, like, every day for the last, like, two years or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is depressing as fuck. Yeah. Ooh. So and then and then when she finally she finally breaks out of that and then she yeah she, she her her character as you know it dies yeah. in, a, in a sense like she she's no longer the like like typical moe sister that you see her as throughout most of the show and then she just transitions back into her original personality which like this arc did not have a particularly happy ending they're like at least half of this arc is just the main character trying to cope yeah, yeah. the the the, le- the the copium machine is on full blast in this episode okay these episodes. but like it is well deserved it is, yeah. it is well des- it is well deserved but like this man like his entire life changed two years ago drastically and it has maintained like its change in the, such a way that it has forced him to devote a lot of his time and attention to changing his own behaviors and the way that he is around the house with yeah. his sister and now, and then now it's and, all around because he was the only person you could see his sister's other personality as a, as her own person yeah yeah so yeah. he so, had to mentally actually see her as her own person so that was just he fucking lost his sister twice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. He he saw... Because bo- both of these, he, he saw them both as aspects of his sister. And then they... And then basically just... Gone. Well, what did they call the skin? Dissociative uh, what again? Dissociative Oh, that's pers- an actual... Uh, that, no, that is an actual thing with no. people who have amnesia. I think the arc actually implies that this was Yeah, dissociative her, amnesia. Yeah. 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 Her no, personality pretty... thing wasn't actually uh, the... Um, the what is it the adolescent syndrome because yeah. yeah. her adolescent syndrome was the social anxiety where yeah. she was getting yeah. the bruises but her personality change was the coping mechanism yeah, yeah. it was her and that it was is, actually something yeah the yeah. disassociative thing is actually a no thing. i was trying yeah. to figure out was the personality or was it the amnesia i couldn't yeah. remember which one it was yeah no it wasn't uh did because if it was did then both of herselves would have been present yeah. still uh. and able to come to the surface at any point yeah well in this case one self was just not there like her memories were just gone G- gone yeah not in two separate personalities hiding in her body but just gone temporarily yeah and yeah you can you, you can see and th- this just takes a massive emotional toll on our on our main character here just he is absolutely fucking done yeah. so retroactively i give this show an approval now that i've actually had now that i get to discuss it i think this show thrives when you have a community of people around you who you can like express your views on it too mm-hmm. because watching it alone is just kind of sad depressing and triggering yeah mm-hmm. but like you know but like you can you can kind of communally discuss all the things yeah. and everything like that yeah. and come to a consensus man this show hurts let's laugh about it what's it, it hurts so good <laughs> <laughs> okay so but during that entire process, like, expect towards the end of the arc, Shoko shows back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which I assume her thing is now temporal displacement. Well, what do you got? So who's seen... I, am I the only one that's seen the movie? You are the only one no. who's seen the movie. Uh, you're so the only I'm, one. I am curious. Do you guys... Because they bring up the idea that she might not exist. She might actually be the main character. Oh, okay. So, so mm. when I was looking up for the movie, I was on Wikipedia. I did spoil myself of this. Okay. I know so exactly I what you, happened. Well, but do you two think is she real? Is she not real? Uh, I I, I like Vor- I like Voren's idea of his temporal displacement. Yeah. We have grandfather paradox, except girlfriend lover paradox. I, yeah. I don't know what name is. <laughs> Uh, all right well i think that about covers it right so we've got one thing left for this segment which is waifu wars waifu wars waifu wars, wars. 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 knickknack 
Oh boy, he's starting with me, huh? I always start with you. Um, I'm gonna go Futaba. Yeah. Realm. Ah, honestly, I'm not sure myself. Come back to me, Vorn. Yeah, Futaba. The separation anxiety demon that lives in all of their heads. And mm. causes this to happen. <laughs> so adult, adolescence, or adolescent syndrome? Mm. That's my waifu. Alright. Hmm. <laughs> mm. The... Huh? The, uh, the 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 never-ending existent the never-ending existential dread that that's my waifu for this one never-ending existential dread I just want hey. to know. <laughs> I just want to say our main protagonist is either the most luckiest guy in the world or the most unluckiest guy in the I world I lean on the side of unlucky unlucky bro yeah. <laughs> All also right. well I'm betting his power is more of like he is on his deathbed and he's just like doing lapis demon, but all of his past. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, that's it. Interesting. Yeah. Right. Um, it's like the Mister well, Nobody movie. I think we'll see you next time with just some extra free thoughts that we have. So try harder, everyone. Like, like, comment, subscribe. <laughs>